Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Bench's Book Reviews. What's in the box today? Here it is. It is Mr. Men Trip to the Moon, uh, says Roger Hargreaves on the front. Though actually, it's original concept by Roger Hargreaves, written and illustrated by Adam Hargreaves, who is presumably some sort of relation, probably a son. I guess Adam, bloke's name. Uh, yeah, this, I don't know how familiar you are with the Mr. Men series. There have been a couple of others reviewed on this channel, but basically this isn't focused on one specific Mr. Man. This is one of the Mr. Men Little Miss Celebrations books where the Mr. Men uh, do something as a group. In this case, probably take a trip to the moon, judging from the cover, which I know you shouldn't do, but let's see. Here we go. One day, Mr. Nonsense. There he is. I mean, these are great if you know the Mr. Men because you have some familiarity with the characters and then they show up and it's kind of fun. One day, Mr. Nonsense was reading the Nonsense Land Times when he had the idea of going to the moon. Well, if a cow can jump over it, then it can't be too hard to get to. He announced to no one in particular. Um, here he is reading. This is... Um, bit odd, it's called the Nonsense Land Times in the text, but you can see it's Nonsense Land News. On the illustrations, that's a bit sloppy, and it says, Cow Jumps Over Moon. Well, that's what he was reading about. Um, so that's okay. He's being nonsensical, as he's got a carrot in a coffee cup. That's a nonsensical thing to do, in keeping with his character. Later that day, he mentioned the idea to Mr. Greedy. That's Mr. Greedy. Mr. Greedy thought it was an excellent plan. I hear the moon's made of cheese, he said, licking his lips. I like cheese. But Mr. Greedy did put Mr. Nonsense straight about one thing. It's a very long, long way away. This is quite funny because Mr. Nonsense is like thinks the moon's close, and then Mr. Greedy is being the intelligent one, correcting him, but he also thinks the moon's made of cheese. Though it's possible the nonsense land moon uh, could be made of cheese, who knows? I don't know how far up into the heavens um, the nonsensical nature of the land extends, actually. We shall find out, I expect. So they went to see Mr. Clever. Now, in the Mr. Clever book, I believe Mr. Clever lives in Cleverland, not Nonsense Land, but I guess they. Um, they're a little bit flexible with who lives where in these uh, celebrations books. What we need is a space rocket, explained Mr. Clever. A space rocket is something I've always wanted to build. Will that be very difficult? asked Mr. Nonsense. Well, it is rocket science, so the answer is yes, said Mr. Clever, who rather likes to show off. That's nice. Everyone knows uh, it's not rocket science, meaning it's not difficult, and this is rocket science, so that's quite nice, says Mr. Clever. Mr. Greedy and Mr. Nonsense looks like he's surprised. They can do a lot with the shape of their mouth. They just make it some, like an ellipse, and then it's going, ooh. Well, Mr. Clever built the rocket. The other two, that's uh, Nonsense and Greedy, uh, set about choosing fellow astronauts to travel with them. Mr. Nosey could not go, because the space helmet would not fit over his nose. Oh, that's very sad. Poor Mr. Nosey. I'm mean, gonna guess he's just off the rack. Space suits and helmets. Hmm, he's even doing a sad face. So he wanted to go. Mr. Tickle and Mr. Tall could not go because neither of them could fit into their space suits. Oh dear. There's Mr. Tall. His legs seem too long, and Mr. Tickle's arms seem too long. And I guess there's no um no way of making that safe on the on the thing. Well, this is sad so far. Hmm. I mean, I guess real astronauts have to meet certain physical criteria, at least in terms of fitness. I don't know if they have to be a certain body shape, but it's not great, is it? 
and little Miss Splendid refused to take her hat off, to take her off her hat, which was no good at all. So she's wearing her hat within the helmet, and she can't see. Um, so I guess she doesn't go, but that's kind of her choice then. She could remove her hat, and they're they're smirking about this and chuckling, whereas the others they're looking um, more distressed and sympathetic. They seem to get be getting the rocket together nicely. Mr. Clever had finished the rocket in record time. Well, it's nice to get a little preview of it on the previous page, and then it comes in. Clever him. And the day of the launch arrived. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off, cried Mr. Clever, pressing the launch button. But nothing happened. Nothing happened, because Mr. Forgetful had forgotten to fill the fuel tank. There he is waving with his... Uh, fuel pump thing. That's unfortunate. An hour later, the rocket took off, roaring up into the sky, trailing a great cloud of smoke. It rose higher and higher into the air, high above the earth, through the atmosphere, and into outer space. That's quite nice. Quite like the way they've described that. It first goes into the air, and then it's going to get beyond where the air is, which is outer space. So that's quite well described. Yes. Very good. Now we'll be able to see who actually made it onto the um, rocket. Oh my, cried Mr. Worry, I'm floating. There he is, he's floating. And so he was, and so was everyone else. We don't weigh much in space. We don't weigh so much in space, explained Mr. Clever, cleverly. It's in keeping with character. The air is much thinner up here. I don't know if the thinness of the air is, it's more to do with gravity, isn't it? I'd have thought it was the, the lack of gravity rather than the lack of air. So maybe Mr. Clever isn't so smart after all. Unlike Mr. Greedy, oh, that's got the air's thinner, and then Mr. Greedy is what you'll call fat, opposite of thin. Chipped in Mr. Rude, rudely. Well, that is rude. Mr. Greedy's not happy about it, not getting on very well. And I'm pretty sure that's not a very good explanation for Mr. Clever. Unless he was just trying to set up rude for that, um, Bob. Hard to say. It wasn't long before Mr. Greedy began to feel hungry. So he cooked spaghetti for everyone. Well, that's nice. He's not just... You might think a greedy person would hoard all the food for themselves, but he's happy to share. Perhaps not the most sensible idea. Ah, because you, as you can see, the spaghetti has gone everywhere in the zero gravity environment. Um, he's enjoying himself then, which is nice. When they arrived, I guess at the moon, Mr. Nonsense was the first to walk on the moon because it had all been his idea. That seems fair. Although he kept an eye out for jumping cows. I'm not sure what although means, I guess he's a bit worried. A cow's going to jump into him. Uh, there he is, looking a bit worried. And he's on the moon, you can see that's fairly classic moon. Um, it was Mr. Worry who discovered strange footprints on the surface of the moon, which he followed while worrying. Very good. Clever's clever, Mr. Worry worries. He was about to bump into a space alien. He was rather relieved to find it was Little Miss Scary walking on her hands. Okay, so they're just hand-shaped prints. Not that unusual. And then he's happy because it's Little Miss Scary. I don't know much about her. But, um, I guess she's managed to worry, Mr. Worry, if not scare him. And there we go. Mr. Small could not believe it. Oh, so they got a tiny spacesuit for him then. Because he's, he's pretty little, Mr. Small. And they got one with a bit more girth for Greedy. I think they've got to put the effort in, at least for Mr. Um, Tall. Uh, anyway, Mr. Small could not believe it. He could lift Mr. Greedy above his head with one finger. Or well, Mr. Clever would tell you that would be the thin air, but um, I'll have a word with him. Everyone had a wonderful day on the moon. Everyone except for Mr. Greedy was disappointed. There's a lot of disappointment in this one. I guess they're not always so cheery from start to finish these books. To discover that the moon is not made of cheese. A lot of people would 
say to Scott, it was not made of cheese, but it's used the is there. Um, it's just a very hard fact. Oh, he even brought his crackers. There's um, there's a Wallace and Gromit thing where Wallace thinks the moon's made of cheese too, and even like slices bits of it off and puts them on his crackers. Um, that probably came out before this thing. This book's quite new, yeah, 2014. So you could say that's ripping off. Uh, Wallace and Gromit, I think it's a grand day out. Uh, a little bit, but never mind. He's even got his nice cheese knife and everything. I told you so, said Mr. Clever. I don't believe he did. Well, we didn't. It wasn't included, but I guess he mentioned it at some point. Something that Mr. Clever never tires of saying. Mr. Smarmy, you could call him. Quite sad as well. Uh, the next day they packed up and went home. It had been a splendid adventure. Well, not for everyone. And Mr. Nonsense was very pleased with himself. And so were all who lived in Nonsense Land. All except one. Go to the moon? What nonsense? Said the cow. I guess that's not the cow that jumped over the moon then. Or Nonsense Land News just reports nonsensical things that haven't actually happened. Well, that's the end. I mean, that was fairly... Um, sad actually I mean, it seemed as though about half the pages had something sad on them a few little jokes that were nice but I mean even the big I mean the big finish was the thing with the crackers which is like you know Greedy was the second guy involved and he got dissed on the way up and then he didn't even get his cheese even though he made spaghetti for everyone yeah I feel a bit sorry for Mr. Greedy in that one but also the ones who couldn't even go nosy and tall and tickle. I mean, I think, I mean, when they say it had been a splendid adventure, I think maybe a bit more effort could have been made to be inclusive. And then they could have had a better time. I mean, there's Greedy smiling on the cover, but sometimes they don't always, um, well, we had it earlier on, didn't we? You should not judge a book by its cover as I was perhaps wrong to do. But there you go, not bad, I must say, considering some people might think that these celebrations books are kind of um, just trying to cash in on the brand. Um, I think that's actually not bad and not necessarily worse than some of the other Mr. Min books, which are also somewhat uh, I would say, variable in their quality. Uh, no, so well done, Adam Hargreaves, inspired by Roger Hargreaves. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, and I will see you next time for another of Mr. Bench's book reviews. Bye.